let's say you go out of town and one of the things on your checklist before leaving is turning off the tank water heater and possibly shutting off the water supply either at the main shutoff to the house or just before the water heater, just as an extra precaution against plumbing leaks while you are away. You also get the added benefit of less energy used, which could pay for an extra beer or a pina colada. But what kind of pressure buildup are we creating in our plumbing system when we return home and turn the water heater back on? As covered in this past video, this pressure buildup is the result of thermal expansion. So how much pressure does 50 gallons exert as it gets heated? I'm also curious as to how long it takes to heat up an entire 50 gallon tank all the way from 70 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, the temperature of the room is hovering between 65 and 70 degrees and the temperature in the tank is sitting around 73 after having usefully cooled it using the method explained in this past video. Once I flipped it on, I turned off the main shutoff to the house and started the wise cam rolling on a water pressure gauge on the hose bib. I also recorded the pressure changes on the Fin app. This is admittedly a bit of wingnut testing because there are many other factors at play, such as the beginning temperature, the ambient temperature in the room with the water heater, and the temperature of the plumbing within the rest of the system. These all fluctuate throughout the day and even during this longer test and impact the final result. But after having learned so much about thermal expansion, this really proves what goes on when a water heater is replaced, cleaned out to keep sediment from building up, or other repairs along with turning off a system for a vacation. In the end, it looks like it takes about 50 minutes to heat 50 gallons from 73 to 120 degrees. In that amount of time, keeping the PSI just at a maximum of 80, except for when I stepped away for too long once, we're looking at a run-up from about 55 to 80, nine times with an incomplete cycle at the end. Why do we care? Starting at 55 PSI and adding an additional 240 PSI brings us to a grand total of 295 PSI. A few weeks ago, I talked about thermal expansion and the design of plumbing systems. If you have an open plumbing system, anything above the water supply pressure gets pushed back into the city supply. Your neighbors absorb it into their plumbing systems. This is totally different in a closed system. If you have a simple check valve, the pressure will build up causing wear and tear on your appliances and faucets and creating a volatile situation in the water heater. If you have an expansion tank as required by code for a storage for a tank water heater, they are not designed to handle pressure that high. At this point, you'll be relying on the pressure relief valve on the water heater, which is triggered to reduce pressure at 150 PSI. Now, I'm not saying that turning your water heater off and perhaps even the water shut off to your home is a bad thing if you go on vacation or a work trip. It does conserve energy and limits the amount of water lost if a leak occurs. There are some other alternatives, such as installing a water monitor and shutoff system, which is what you're looking at. The Fin app showing the pressure detected by Fin Plus, which I have on my water main. You can check out my other videos on water monitor and shutoff systems if you're interested in learning more. But what this video really highlights is how much pressure we're introducing in our own system and possibly the neighborhood, depending on your plumbing setup. It's also another example of how thermal expansion works. Going from 55 PSI to 295 PSI is an eye-opening number. Also, make sure you leave about an hour for your water to heat up before washing off the sand between your toes. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.